Hi, my name is Danny, and today I'll be showing you how to make a screensaver using Quartz Composer. I don't, when I first started doing this, I didn't know anything about Quartz Composer at all, so I went to my friend the internet and did a quick Google search on Quartz Composer tutorials. I read through quite a few of these before I found this one, but this is one that I ended up learning most of my stuff off of. I followed the link and got this. And I, at first this was all way over my head and I didn't know really what it was talking about, but I saw a picture and I decided to open Quartz Composer and just kind of mess around and try to figure out what was going on. When I decided to do a blank composition to start out with because I these looked a little bit too advanced for me, so I just chose a blank one. And this is what I got. I didn't see anything that was going to show me how to get a cube, audio input, or clear. So I did a little bit of just clicking around, and I found the patch inspector up here, this little eye. And then also if you go to edit, and then show patch creator and that's how you will get the little boxes called patches on here. I went back to this website and it tells me that first I need to add a clear patch so that I can have a default background color such as the black in this one up here. So I just searched clear in this little patch creator and I found the renderer clear. You just drag it in but it only lets you have one color if you look over here in the viewer it only lets you have one color so I kind of messed around with that and I noticed that in the category over here it says render so I just went down to all of the rendered things and just kind of messed around with these and one that I found that I really liked was gradient so I dragged that in there and just deleted this clear patch and when you click on this up here in your patch inspector you notice you have three colors you can choose from and I was just messing around and I chose pink, purple, or eggplant, and black. So these are my colors and it, you should notice a change over in here on your viewer. And then I went back to my instructions. And it tells me that I need to, um, if I want to make an audio input one, which means that it will react to sound, I need to add the little audio input patch, which also took a little bit to find at first, but just type in audio input. You'll start typing and you'll find it there, and it's the one that says source over there. So just drag that in, and right now we don't really have anything to connect it with, so we got to keep going. And it says that he added a cube patch to make these little boxes here. And I, I started with that. I started with the cube. It's over in the render thing also. started with the cube but it just looks kind of boring it's like a white cube there and when you attach the volume thing to it it would bounce a little bit but I didn't really like that that much so I deleted that and just kind of messed around with some of the other ones like teapot that's fun and um, the one that I decided I liked the most was particle system I just thought it looked kind of cool and uh, not done yet but um, I clicked the particle system and then if you drag the volume peak if you click on the little circle by the word volume peak in the audio input and drag it over to color, you'll see that they start to change color depending on what you have over here in your inspector. And one thing that I found, I like the way it looks better. It's all just kind of um, what your preference is onto how it looks. But I decided to um, add so it looks almost kind of see-through and opaque in some places. And if you notice, if I stop talking, the little the squares will get smaller and not as bright white. But if I talk again, or clap, then they get bigger. So after, this was kind of, this was my first one is what it looks like and um, this is what the background looks like. It looks similar to um, 
the one on the instructions I was trying to follow. Um, so I decided I'm satisfied with this one, so I'm going to quit out of Google and um, just save it to my desktop. Now after it's been saved, I'm going to quit out of Quartz Composer and it is now over here. And in order to make this, if I want to make it a screensaver, go into my Macintosh hard drive, double click on that, open it up, go into the library folder, down to screensavers over here and just drag this in or not. It can also run straight from um, I think it can run from your desktop. You should be able to go into change your desktop background and go to your screensaver. You should be able to say other. And here it is over here. So you can test it out or anything. And if you notice, if you snap, it gets bigger or talking makes it louder. So it's reactant to the sound. And I have mine set up right now so that it is my hot corners over here. We'll start my screensaver. And there it is, our final product. And a lot of Quartz Composer is just, or from what I've learned, is just kind of messing around with it and just trying out different things and seeing what works and what doesn't and what you like. So I hope this helped you get started into Quartz Composer. Thank you.